Lack of teamwork. What must be missing in a lack of teamwork from a conversation standpoint? What conversations would be involved in a lack of teamwork? Why might that be present? Yeah, there could be they don't remember what we're doing, right? How many of you remember why you're doing some of what you're doing? I mean, don't we lose track of that? So one thing could be that an initiative conversation has gone out of existence. I forgot why I'm doing this stuff. So one would want to continually remind people of what we're doing and what we're up to. So that'd be one thing, right? Kind of, kind of gives us the purpose, the intent of what we're up to. Now, why, why else might there be a lack of teamwork? So we missed the accomplishment ingredients. So one of the things that would be missing is clarity or lack of with regard to the resource, which is all the planning. We've never worked out or had a conversation about how we're actually supposed to work together. The military has, you would know, the military has their after action reviews and their before action reviews. And before action reviews, which are conversations for understanding, essentially called how's this all going to go, They've worked all that out so they can see how, how it's going to go. And they can see, yeah, you can't do that then because we're going to be dropping bombs or shelling that area so the infantry can't move through at that time. So they work all that kind of stuff out so that there then occurs teamwork, even though they're off doing their individual things. That's an understanding conversation. It's a very well-developed understanding conversation. So one reason you have a lack of teamwork is there hasn't been that level of understanding. There may have been a lot of telling, but there hasn't been the understanding that actually got generated. So people don't actually know their roles and what they're accountable for, or when things are going to happen, or the whole sequencing that would get created in an understanding conversation. Why else might there be a lack of teamwork? Could be that people feel slighted, they've done, you know, how many of you feel over, overly appreciated? You've just gotten more acknowledgement and recognition than you can possibly stand. Most of us don't. We do feel undervalued, underappreciated, uh, that kind of thing. So there could be a closure conversation on lack of teamwork, because one reason there's lack of teamwork is not only underappreciated, but we've never dealt with the lack of teamwork as a closure, as a phenomenon to be dealt with. And then the other reason that there could be a lack of, of uh, teamwork is that people actually are not clear on the agreements. So performance conversations have not been clear. Lack of teamwork pretty much covers all of them. Workload overwhelm. So what would be missing in why your schedule is so full? We can prioritize, so you can prioritize it, and assuming you had the priorities in agreement with everybody else, but that would probably, but you could prioritize it, but that won't get any, that'll still have you with an, that'll have you with an overwhelmed priority list. Going back to the understanding conversation of understanding what your true role and responsibility is on something, I have a, okay. I feel like we get, you know, a lot of times you can get dumped on if you don't clearly define who is Okay, good. So understanding, having those, being straight about those, and actually having like real understanding conversations, right? Correct. Where we covered that stuff. Good. Why else might you have workload overwhelm? Resource planning that includes both current and future tasks. Uh, so can you say a little bit more about that? Resource planning. No, I understand, but I mean, how do you mean? Well, so you understand where you are today and future projects, future initiatives. Okay. You don't get to this point. Okay. So I would put that as an understanding, working all that stuff out. Now I'll put another one in there for you, which is related to uh, uh, performance conversations. There's a word. There's a word. Uh, we won't get an opportunity to go through all that's involved in it, but there's a word you might want to learn. It's called no. <laughs> So it's possible to decline requests. But to decline a request actually requires a conversation in which you decline the request. 
And you can't just decline the request without having, for most people, some kind of rationale or justification for it. And I'm too busy is not a, not a justification because everybody's too busy. So part of what's, what's involved in actually being able to say no is to be responsible for all that you have and to let people know that you have that and ask, how do I work this out? Uh, it's a little bit harder. It goes a little bit beyond. Some of that we'll get to for those of you that are in the delegation uh, class. We'll be dealing somewhat with uh, a key piece of that. But the ability to say no um, is key. But that actually requires a conversation in which you're talking about the work. And it does relate to what you're saying, Drew, about the priorities. You know, with your boss and other bosses called, look, these are the six things. I can clearly do these five. Um, but I'm not going to be able to do this other one unless something moves. Um, is that also part of a closure conversation? Yeah, it can definitely be part of closure but conversation. You want me, therefore, we're, you should, we're closing on with this other agreement. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you've asked, so what does that, I want to acknowledge this. Can we complete something over there? Absolutely. It's also the initiative con conversation, right? How so? Because you're tying in the why. Well, the why, um, you mean in terms of renegotiating the stuff? Yeah. I mean, part of the, you want to keep the, uh, uh, the context, the why, is going to occur a lot. Uh, so it's inside some kind of purpose or some kind of mission or some kind of project. Uh, but the key piece on the over, over, overwhelm is the extent to which you're willing to speak up about what's currently really on your plate and acknowledging you can't really do it all. How many of you have to-do lists? How many of you have to-do lists? How many of you have items on the to-do list that have been on there for a while? <laughs> so that's stuff you're not going to do. Furthermore, here's what's really interesting about that. Somebody gave you that to-do, right? And it's been on there for a long time and there's been no follow-up. I wonder how critical that to-do really was. Now multiply the fact that you have several of those by everybody in the organization over time. And what you can see is that there's a tremendous amount of work that's being generated that's actually not required. And it's not required. How you know it's not required is it never gets done. And the organization is still successful at carrying out its primary objectives and missions and other things which is, I had a conversation with a vice president in Chicago related to this, and he said, you know, if we do what you say, there's a whole lot of work in our organization that won't get done. I said, you're absolutely right. I said, the thing you want to know is it's already not getting done. You're just going to tell the truth about it. There's a ton of work in organizations that are on to-do lists that somebody thinks should be done, but not getting done.